Lord. All righty. Hello. My name is Mitriz. I do a lot of Elden Ring and Sekiro speedruns. I'm currently seventh on the leaderboard for this particular category, uh, and I'm here with my uh, co-commentators. Hello. My name is Aggie. Uh, I also run Elden Ring and other Souls games and do various challenge runs and whatnot. Hi, I'm Parky. I also do Elden Ring and Sekiro and other Souls games Crazy. and whatnot. <laughs> Uh, and so here we're going to be doing uh, Elden Ring Any% percent glitch list. So uh, as we get into it here, uh, as is a classic, if you've seen any Elden Ring speedrun, we're going to go with the Samurai Start. It's got really, really good starting stats for what we're going to be using. And of course, we need a name here. How about you all let me cook <laughs> yeah, let as we do cook. this? All right. Uh, we are also going to be selecting the lands between rune. Uh, we're going to need this just for some early runes, and we'll go ahead and get it started. So time will start as soon as I select yes here. So let's start the run in five, four, four three, three, two, two one. one. Let's, let's go. go. Let's get it, man. All right, so of course, uh, Elden Ring, any percent uh, glitch list. That means that we just have to get to the end of the run as fast as we possibly can. Uh, and glitch list, we're not allowed to use any glitches. Uh, we can still perform a couple of skips and things, but uh, nothing, uh, nothing that really breaks the game wide open. Mitch will definitely be performing some non-glitches. <laughs> sure. There's some borderline cases, as always. Yeah. But first, as we always. have the tutorial boss here. Um, you know, he's optional. You're meant to lose, so of course, losing is faster than winning. So we're just going to jump off. He's going to spawn in right as we phase out here. And tutorial done. There we go. Let's right. go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, one boss down. Let's go. <laughs> All right, now the, uh, the early game here is going to be a lot of collecting items that we're going to be needing later and just uh, generally getting to the places that we're going to need to be later. So uh, it's just going to start with getting Torrent and then grabbing the Dectus medallions uh, are the first couple of orders of business. As I do this, there's a little bit of speed tech that we can do along the way. You'll notice a lot of times I am blocking and jumping. Um, it is a little bit faster to do these than uh, just walking straight, especially uphill. It is significant significantly faster. Yeah, and we're also going to do a little bit of tech with the bow here. So you see he's got that in his right hand. And anytime we jump off a ledge, you can two-hand your bow mid-air. It's the only weapon you can two-hand while mid-air. And if he times it just right, if that two-hand animation is ending right as he's landing on the ground, it will skip a little bit of stagger that slows us down. We'll, so we'll see if he gets a nice smooth landing here. That means he did it right. And perfect. Yeah, there we go. All right, that is a pretty small window, uh, but we do it a lot throughout the run, so we'll get a lot of uh, practice seeing it. But uh, it, it, you know, it saves about a half a second each time I can get it, so we're going to go for that just about every time that I'm landing from a hard fall. Yep, and now we're going to stop by our boy Kale here. So that's why we started with that uh, Lands Between rune. So he already popped that while he was on the elevator, and that'll give us plenty of money to pick up that crafting kit there which we'll be using, uh, we actually only craft one item throughout this run. It is the Bleed Resin, which of course is very, very useful because Bleed is probably the best status effect there is in this game. Yeah, we'll be stacking that with our weapon that also does Bleed to just uh, stack up Bleed so fast. Even a short fight, we can get sometimes two or three Bleed procs on them and just destroy their health pool. Yeah, and he's picking up some Root Resins there. That is one of the crafting materials necessary for that Bleed Resin very conveniently on our path here, mm -hmm. over to the Grace, where we'll talk to Melina and get Torrent so we can really start moving. Yeah, as we do that, uh, not a whole lot to say right here as we get Torrent, so time for a couple of donations. Well, in the time that we started this run, it's been a quick, like, three minutes here. We reached 1.5 mil, and we're already up to 1.514 million. That's incredible. Let's go. Let's go. Part of the big help we got from that was $2,000 from Pease that says, I have to see that Super Mario Maker 2 versus Showcase. Thanks to all the runners and tech staff for putting on such wonderful events year after year. Can we get a round of applause for the tech staff?
Remember, y'all, right now is a great time for your donations. Getting us to 2 million unlocks the blindfolded Breath of the Wild, but you can also double up and put your money towards the Super Mario Maker 2 versus Showcase. You can unlock two big things tonight as we creep to the end of SGDQ. I want to see some energy in these final few hours, y'all. All right, Mitch is now heading into the Dragon Burnt Rune, so we're going to head downstairs here. There's going to be some nice, friendly rats here that are going to try to give us a hug. But there's also a trap chest, so we are going to hop in there, which I'm sure many people did casually and were terrified of where they ended up. But it's actually pretty useful for the speedrun. So we're going to jump on top of the chest, make sure we don't get eaten alive by the rats, and then we'll end up in the Celia Crystal Tunnel in Kaelid. Yeah, and we need to go to Kaled for a couple of reasons. The main reason is to get one of the Dectus medallions to allow us to get to Altus Plateau. But there's also a lot of very powerful items here. Um, there's a very good talisman that we're going to be getting, as well as some upgrade materials for our weapon. Yep, so we're just going to be running straight out of this tunnel. We need to dodge an enemy attack that'll be hitting right about now. Uh, no, he was oh, nice to us. <laughs> he the fire. Very nice. OK, we'll take that. Nice little bow cancel there. We're going to grab this Grace. And uh, yeah, then we're heading into Celia. Are we going into Celia before the Somber Five? Uh, yes, into okay. Celia first. But yeah, we've got the first uh, nice little bit of torrent parkour coming up. So this is going to be Celia skip. So normally in Celia, you have to light three torches to uh, make these little like magic walls disappear so you can get up on top of the town. But we're just going to do some clever little platforming up some tree branches with the torrent here. That was not it yet. That was not it. No, that here was we go. Here we go. But here is a tree bench. So, yeah, we're just going to jump on that. Ah. OK, OK, OK. OK, not the first try. Oh, okay. Torrent's going the wrong way. Come on, Torrent. <laughs> OK, OK. <laughs> thank you, thank you. All right. It is a little precise. Ah. OK. Um, Horse controls. Yeah, I would yeah, just yes. like to add what you guys aren't seeing. Mitch does play keyboard and mouse, and if you've ever played a Elden awesome. Ring or Dark Souls game, uh, keyboard and mouse is so difficult. And so he's menuing here using both hands, fingers are crossing oh, over. Okay. So huge shout out to that. I just doesn't want to give it to you. And it does not. Usually Torrent gets the double. Oh, there, there we, we go. go. There we go. That's part one. Got to no, be a little on. careful. A okay. little careful. Okay. Oh. Oh! Okay. Oh. Okay. okay. Yeah, that's some marathon luck right there. Yeah. So that, is, that is. Okay. The game actually froze there, so I do have to actually restart the game here. That was actually a frame perfect trick you just performed. Yeah. Yes. Like, frame perfect. Actually, so if you put out on the exact same frame that you die, which she was gonna die from the fall there, um, mm -hmm. it crashes the game. So there you go. Yeah. Just GDQ it's things. Be <laughs> just GDQ things. Thank you very yeah. Much. Okay. Uh, and it does take a little bit to uh, start back up. So uh, if you want to get a donation in to uh, you know, ease my embarrassment here, that'd be great. <laughs> well, I think I got a great supportive one here. This is a $50 donation from Opt Plays Games. It says, as we say on your stream, good luck, Mitch. So crowd, can I get a good luck, Mitch? Good luck, Mitch. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I think on. we got a moment for another? I think so, I yes. Think, yeah. Tech is having fun today. Uh, Marathon yeah. luck. You know? mm -hmm. $224.26 from sodium 70 milligrams that says some random numbers for the Super Mario Maker 2 versus Showcase, which is currently at 118,000 of the 250,000 needed. We're making great progress, team. Is Elden Ring giving me time for another? Uh, I think we're about to get in. Yeah. So. Maybe really quick. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Elden Ring. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What a great game. Yeah. As we load back in, uh, it is going to kill us uh, still, even though we uh, put out. <laughs> um, so unfortunate, but we'll just get back there and do the skip uh, properly this time. Yeah. Uh, I would go from the graves. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. A little easier. All oh, right. Elden Ring. Oh, Elden Ring. Little goober. Yeah. Uh, funny little fact, we're playing this actually on the current patch of the game. On older patches, there was another tree that we could do this on that was much, much easier. Um, this tree uh, just barely still works and has not been patched out yet and hopefully stays that way. Yeah, the patch literally just removed the tree <laughs> from existence. Yeah. Uh, they, they wanted nothing to do with it, but mm -hmm. we've got this other one. It's just significantly more annoying. Yeah. Do you need the runes? Um, yes. They might be on the tree. Uh, they are on the tree. <laughs> okay, well, have fun with that. Oops. There we go. 
go. All right, let's go. Okay, and slowly make our way up. There we nice. go. Nice, yeah. beautiful. That's part one. We still got part two. <laughs> this one's significantly easier, though. Yeah, yeah, and much less dangerous. We should not yeah. die if we uh, fail it. And perfect. Nice. All go. right. So you guys will see, be seeing a lot of torrents climbing vertically like that, <laughs> yeah, like a yeah. mountain goat. Yeah. He's a mountain goat, right? Yeah, he, yeah. Did or whatever. Half goat something. I don't know. <laughs> He's just that dude. Yeah. yeah. A lot of torrent parkour, so. So we're going to get this church uh, plague, grace, whatever it's called, and we're going to sit down and talk to our girl, Melina. Uh, we got the crisscross applesauce <laughs> animation. <laughs> Unfortunate. Uh, yeah, there's two animations you can get when you sit down at this grace. Your legs can be out in front of you like so, or uh, crossed like they were before. If they're crossed, it just takes about three seconds to uncross them uh, before you can finally take Melina's hand and get abducted to the round table hold. Yep. Very beautiful moment. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So touching. And okay, we're here, we're leaving. Yep. And we're <laughs> yeah. yeah, we actually don't want to go to the round table hold for anything, but it is a requirement in order to be able to beat the game. If you never go to round table hold, it will not let you pass by certain barriers later in the game. So uh, that's just the most convenient spot to do it because we were also abducted by the chest, uh, literally abducted in the, uh, the game sense, and we had to rest somewhere. So might as well do it. Yep. And now we're just going back to that Celia Crystal Tunnel Grace, and we're going to go in the other direction. We're going to pick up a Somber 5, so that is an upgrade material that we'll need to upgrade our good old Bloodhound Fang later. Mm -hmm. So this is just the most convenient one. Hopefully Mitch can get out of here before he gets in combat. I don't think uh, It will nighttime. not work. It's so, not nighttime. So yeah. I'm just going to grab it, go behind, out of combat, and uh, quit out and warp away. Yeah, no biggie. Yeah. Right, so what is interesting about this game, and I don't speed her in this one, but what I've learned through watching all this is that the, if you do mess up a little bit, you the next part of the game is in a different time of the day, and so yep. a lot of things do actually change, and you're missing shadows that you might use for you know visual cues and stuff. Um, so so very very interesting aspect of the speedrunning Elden Ring for sure. Mm -hmm. Uh, here we are finally going to get our first half of the Dectus Medallion. This is our first truly required part of the run. Uh, we have to be able to get it to Altus in order to be able to progress. And the Dectus is one of the three ways to do that, but ends up being uh, by far the fastest for this particular route as we are grabbing things along the way anyway. Also worth noting that it's definitely the most consistent regardless of what's the fastest. This one, you're not fighting anyone. You're not, you know... Hoping for good RNG, you just <laughs> grab it and go, right? Right. Absolutely. Just don't get murder murdered by the uh, the grandma bats in here. <laughs> yeah, usually they're nice, so hopefully no more GDQ luck. Surely <laughs> no more, right? <laughs> <laughs> Everyone say hi, grandma. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. All right, little speed angry. tech here for the uh, chest that I'm about to open up. Uh, if you stand on top of it when you open it up, you get to skip the animation of actually lifting it open. I'm going to try to land right on the lip of it and do that. Um, sometimes doesn't work, but let's see. Good, yes. Nice. Thank you. All right, a couple more useful items here. We're going to grab a uh, just a little rune pack. I believe it's a 12, however many that is. And then there's also the Radagon's Sword Seal, which is extremely useful. That is 20 levels worth of stats, so it's going to give us five vigor, five endurance, five dex, and five strength, which are all stats that we like. So, you know, why not? Mm -hmm. One more quit out here to de-aggro everything so that we can warp away. And then uh, after that, we're going to be heading to the next part of the Dectus medallion, but it's just going to be a whole lot of walking, so we can get a whole lot of donations in. All righty, let's kick it off with a $100 donation here from Izquen that says, I'm here to watch the Tarnished go fast and touch <laughs> grace. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. All right, here's a $250 donation from Stormy Rain that says, Loving the energy of this SGDQ. Great to support MSF. And I want to see Bubs, you not see Breath of the Wild. Let's do this, chefs. Look at that. We passed over 1.53 million in the meantime. $100 donation here from Hatsmith that says, I need me some Super Mario Maker 2, which is currently at $128,750 of the $250,000 needed. We have crested over the halfway point, and I know we're going to make it. 
$25 here from Sladen that says, gotta get a blindfolded Malekith and Breath of the Wild, but most of all, we gotta get as much as we can to Doctors Without Borders. Can I get a Yes Chef from Donation Train? And the audience as well, let's go! $75 here from Is This Dog that says, No, this is Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> Mitch, you want to explain uh, our little shopping trip that we're about to take? Uh, yeah, so we're about to go buy some sleep arrows. That's also why we wanted the uh, lands between rune. Uh, we could pop the runes that we've got so far, but uh, no need yet. Uh, we're grabbing these sleep arrows because we're going to need them later for the Godskin duo. So if you have ever seen any speedrun, you've probably seen the Godskin duo uh, fall asleep. And if you've ever played this casually, you've probably wished that they were asleep. <laughs> yeah. And uh, this is a good way to do it, is the sleep arrows. Uh, there's also sleep pots that are used in other routes, but uh, sleep arrows are along the way for us this time. Yeah, it's a tech that definitely feels too good to be true. When I first heard about the sleep, it was like, really? <laughs> they do that? <laughs> Yes, helps us fight just one at a time, or in a speed run, uh, zero at a time. And we'll see that later. <laughs> so something that Mitch does do when he uh, talks to vendors or or anyone, any other NPCs, is you don't uh, say bye to them when you're leaving. You, you just, just walk away. You walk away, <laughs> and so that's why when he does talk to them, he takes a few steps away because when you're done shopping, you can just uh, keep walking, and they don't bother you anymore. Mm -hmm. No, I mean this is the guy that says he's hungry when he sells meat <laughs> and he's at a campfire. So, okay. Yeah. I don't know if we need to be the nicest to him. Um, so here we are. We're going to pick up some blood roses in order to make the blood grease and also to get the other half of the Dectus medallion. Yep, and the blood uh, grease recipe is also very conveniently located right in this room. So just one stop shop. All right, don't get pumpkin headed. Okay, oh, you got pumpkin headed? Uh, a little bit. So That's it's okay. Fine. It's fine. That is fine. Plenty of life left. <laughs> <laughs> it's a resource, right? It's meant to be used. Yeah. All right. Unfortunately, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it is daytime here, so normally we'd be able to grab the uh, Dectus Medallion and immediately warp away, but I'm going to have to do a little quit out just to get out of the uh, combat so that I can warp away. Oh. Did oh, not get go. the uh, uh, chest skip that time, but... No worries, just about a second. Yeah, and normally when you're speedrunning this, uh, we time it in IGT, so in-game time, meaning that all of this time on the main menu isn't counted against you. So those super annoying you know, company logo pop-ups that appear every time, they don't count against you normally. Obviously, RTA takes a little longer, but yeah, normally a very quick process. Yeah, you do see a lot of uh, quit-outs, though, in these runs, so... It comes with the territory. Yeah, absolutely. All right, now it looks like we're heading towards Stormville to actually fight something, but no, 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 no. This is an open no. road. <laughs> so we're going to go around the side path. You don't actually have to go through Stormville Castle to get to Lyrnia. So we're going to take a quick pit stop, grab the uh, Stormhill Shack Grace here, and then we're going to continue along the cliff edge to get to Lyrnia to do a little bit more setup for the run. And what will we find in Lyrnia, Mitch? Oh, we will find uh, many things. We'll find the Dectus Lift, which is where we need to actually go, but then we will also find uh, the Blacksmith EG, and he sells a lot of upgrade materials. So we don't have to go throughout the world and find them all. We can just buy all the things we need for the early game. So super convenient. Also means that we don't have to go back to Roundtable Hold to talk to Hugh, who has just a bunch of dialogue. He's a blabbermouth. Yeah, he is a oh, bit he of a loves to talk. <laughs> <laughs> he likes to talk about his feelings. He's a lonely yeah. guy. Okay. <laughs> Uh, we are doing this little bit of a skip here. It doesn't actually, nice. there we go, nice. Uh, doesn't skip anything too much, just a little bit of walking. Yeah. Yeah, so if you were playing this casually, you could just walk a little bit to the right and kind of cross a bridge and do all this if you don't want to, you know, go through the castle. Um, but Mitch was just a speedrunner, a gamer. It's a fast so. <laughs> All right, we are going to do also another little bit of a skip here as we get down the cliffside. There are some wolves to let us know right where to jump off. And if I do it right, we should not die to fall damage. There's one, two, two and there. three. Nice. Excellent. It's 
it's always fun watching those drops in these games because how does fall damage work? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> sometimes we'll take damage from those drops, sometimes we won't, and I still have no idea what the difference is. So yeah, We like to think it's someone years. flicking a coin in the, in the background. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, but we are just going to be uh, walking for a little bit longer to get to EG so we can have a couple more donations. Alrighty, first thing to shout out here, since we have officially reached the Blindfolded Malaketh, before we even started this run, we have now opened the Baron of Shell Fly Me to the Stars bonus for the, f for the Baron of Shell coming up, just so you're aware. You can put your donations towards either Super Mario Maker 2 or that Baron of Shell level, and all of it's still going to also contribute to the bonus game Breath of the Wild. Speaking of, $500 here from Rick Rock that says, let's get that Breath of the Wild, and maybe next event we can get Tears of the Korok, uh, I mean <laughs> Tears of the Kingdom! Do we have strong opinions on Koroks here? I'm not a big fan. How do you three yeah, feel? I don't think anyone's a big fan. They're definitely cute. That's not yeah. enough. I, I like tormenting them. Does that count? <laughs> okay, you're good. Uh, yeah. You pass. <laughs> <laughs> no, seeing the first one was definitely exciting. <laughs> the 900th one, not so yeah. Uh, yeah, um, we, th we took one warp here to Ryo Lucaria. It was just a layover. We're going to go over to the next warp to get to EG. And then from there, we're actually, it's the fastest to just continue along that path across the cliff to, uh, to get to the Dectus Cliff. So that's all we're doing. Yeah, not a very well-known path over by EG that you can continue on to the Dectus Lift. So that's what we're going to do. It is uh, the fastest, because luckily there's just one rock that sort of makes a bridge connection between the, uh, the two halves of the ravine. Yep. Yeah. So we won't be talking to EG here, but um, we will be grabbing the Grace because, as you've guys seen for the last 20 minutes, we are just running around grabbing Graces to set us up for really quick uh, later of the game. So um, yeah. I promise, eventually we do fight a boss. Yeah, there I, will be some I swear action. It. I swear <laughs> it's a front-loaded setup here. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah. That's one of the great things about this run. Uh, you gotta love the world <laughs> for sure. You gotta <laughs> love running. Scenic route. Yeah. yeah. So EG is important because he sells Somber 1, Somber 2, Somber 3, and Somber 4. And for Somber weapons, uh, there's either Somber or Spinning weapons, right? Somber weapons only take one stone per upgrade, and it goes all the way to plus 10. So he sells 40% of a maxed weapon, right? If you use a standard Spinning weapon, uh, you need two stones, four stones, and then six stones for each level. So then those go all the way up to plus 25. So if you wanted to do a standard weapon, you need 96 uh, upgrade materials, which is kind of a lot compared to 10. <laughs> so yeah, we're just going to be uh, stopping with EG to get a somber weapon level though. Ah. And here's our very convenient stone bridge that's just kind of jutting out randomly. Here we're going to do a little bit more shopping, a couple of things. One thing that we need, one thing that's for a little bit of safety. Uh, the bow we're going to need later. That's uh, going to go with our arrows. Uh, and the rune arc is just a little bit of safety. Uh, not a very well-known fact is that if you use a rune arc without having any great rune equipped, it will increase your maximum health by a little bit. It's like 5 or 10%. Um, nothing you really notice, uh, but it's just enough to survive a couple of attacks throughout this game. So we'll take it for safety. And we could probably get in a donation or two as we approach the lift here, if you want to go ahead. Absolutely. It looks like some people might have liked what I attempted to intro the run with. And then, <laughs> anyways, $500 here from Al the Time Shark. Let's see if we can do this again. Blinded, slay the dark clergyman. Let grace be thy only guide. Oh, tarnished, <laughs> show thy speed. Wow, wow. very good, very yeah. good. If you want to send more of those, make sure you put them towards the Super Mario Maker 2 versus Showcase, and I will do my best, I swear. Speaking of, $5 here from Miss Palindrome. Yes, Chef, $5 train towards the Super Mario Maker 2 versus Showcase incentive. Chef, we can do this, chefs. Less than three. Can I get a yes, Chef? Yes, yes chef. chef. Let's go. All right, we finally made it into Altus, but uh, unfortunately, that just means more <laughs> running until we actually finally get to the first boss that we're going to kill. Um, so It is yeah, very beautiful, though. <laughs> it is very, very pretty looking, mm -hmm. especially over there, the uh, Erd tree. Oh, so gorgeous. Um, Thank you, Torgad Mitch. Mm -hmm. So as we're watching this, all this running, we definitely need to... Um, Give some thoughts out to Torrent because, you know, <laughs> He's he, just, he just runs and runs. <laughs> it's 
asking for a big bag on his back. Yeah. And I keep yeah. kicking him in the yeah. sides to make him go yeah, faster. Yeah. Jeez. He's a team player. Absolutely. MVP for sure. <laughs> All right, we can probably get a few more donations in as we are riding to our next stop. All righty, $50 donation here from Drew Minus that says, Good luck, Mitch! It was awesome watching you figure out the blindfolded Malekith fight. I know you'll smash it. Hoping for no crisscross applesauce. Well, <laughs> oh, mm, too late for that, unfortunately. That. $250 donation here from Rudy. On the road to $2 million. Let's go! <laughs> wow, we're already up to $1.545 million. Incredible! $250 here from Devillum. Arise now, ye chat, ye donators. <laughs> not gonna have a voice by the end of this. You should be a voice actor. Yeah, that's how good. How much did we practice this? Yeah. Uh, not enough, apparently. <laughs> I think it's pretty good. <laughs> I appreciate that. All right, we got the Tree Sentinel duo there. Uh, we're not really interested in them. We will have to fight their older brother, though, which is coming up in just a second. And then, uh, yeah, from there, we'll actually have a bit of some action-packed uh, minutes coming up. Well, we'll be fighting their older brother and grandpa, right? The Two of them. Grandpa? Uh, <laughs> kind of. Uh, their younger brother. Come on, the one in... It, yeah, the yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, just a little bit more running here. So we're going to swing by. We're going to get these two conveniently placed golden seeds here. Uh, Mitch is going to put all of those into blue, except for one. The one red is just for safety. And then I think we'll have five blue flasks. Is that right? That is right. Five blue, one red. Yeah, so our main weapon is going to be Bloodhound Fang once we get it. And the main benefit of Bloodhound Fang is going to be the Ashvor attack, where you kind of do a flip backwards, and then you can do a follow-up R2 attack, where you dash forward and get some iframes and do some huge damage. And of course, that's an Ash of War, so it takes mana to cast. So we're going to want to have plenty of blues on deck so that we can get through several fights in a row without having to rest to restore mana. Little also, a little bit here. of climbing, yeah. Nice, there we go. Nice. Nice. That one only saves about three seconds, but you know, for the uh, swag, it's always worth it. Yeah, why not? All right, and coming up is that Draconic Tree Sentinel, which is going to be our first fight of the run. Uh, this guy is very, very, very scary if you fight him straight up, so we're going to not do that. <laughs> it is a, the first boss, which is a pretty scary it, first yeah. boss, Interesting right? Interesting first yeah. boss, for sure, yeah. Yeah, coming in unupgraded, no levels or anything, just rush straight oh here. Oh, gosh, how will he do it? How will he do it? <laughs> oh. All right, so what's going to happen here is Mitch is going to ride right by him on Torrent here, grab his attention, and then he's going to hug this wall here. He's going to hop off Torrent onto this rock. Hopefully, he'll uh, he'll see the DTS kind of chase him over. He's going to watch that right side of the screen for DTS to stop casting Fireball. And OK, there he is. So he's going to run over to this cliff edge. He's going to wait for a jump attack and parry it, and then hit him on the butt, and beautiful. Oh, goodbye. Let's All go. Right. So Mitch made that look very, very fell. easy, but there is a lot <laughs> to that fight that uh, makes it a lot harder than you think. Yeah, it is a very tight timing window on that parry, and you have to get a very precise angle on that butt hit to get him to yeah. tumble in the right direction off the cliff. Anyway, he's going to grab that grace there, and if you were paying attention, you saw there was a golden wall blocking his entrance to Lane Bell. So to get that to go away, he's going to need to get two great runes. So we're going to go for Radon and then Godric. First, we got to get our weapons set up. But those are our next two uh, important progression objectives. Just allocating all our flasks here, getting ready for action. Mm -hmm. And getting our first level ups of the run, getting just a bit more damage for ourselves. So yeah, here we are at the uh, Everjill where we're going to get the first, or the, the main weapon of the run, the yep. Bloodhound Fang. Yeah, so he's got that Bleed Grease at the ready. He's just going to spam Unsheath with his Uchi Katana. It is very good at staggering enemies. And uh, yeah, this should be more or less scripted, unless he is a big jerk. He can be a big jerk, so let's see how it goes. All right, that's the attack we want. Stagger. A nice, convenient Beautiful. Oh, Beautiful. So this is arguably the best weapon in the game, or at least among the best weapons in the we among the best, and uh, for so many reasons. Like you know, we mentioned it's somber. The range is huge. Uh, the L2 R2 is is just so powerful. It's also really um, accessible early. Yeah. 
And it's one of the flashiest. It's a really cool speed weapon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Also, speed the weapon. bleed. The bleed is huge. Yeah, and yeah. bleed. And it's one of the few somber weapons that, that you can actually put grease on, so we can stack that bleed even more. Yeah. Yeah, it's one of the ones I used in my casual playthrough just because I just liked it. It's just a fun weapon to use. It is right, so yeah. fun, yeah. All right, now we're going to take out the Tree Sentinel here, doing the second one. And uh, this is purely for his weapons. So this guy drops the Golden Halberd. You may have noticed that we leveled some of Faith uh, when Mitch uh, did his first Oops. set of level ups there. Okay, he's being a bit of a jerk right now, but that's fine. Yeah, this is all right. And the good thing about the Golden Halberd is we get it. Okay, there we go. I think we're okay. Oh, oh no! The <laughs> oh, straight okay. hit. No, that's okay. The shield hitboxes are absolutely insane. They yeah, are crazy, crazy. So. Yeah. There are iframes on that attack I was doing, so I was hoping to iframe through it, but uh, unfortunately caught me right as we hit each other. Yeah, no biggie. He spawns right here. You can just yeah. do it again real quick. Pretty quick refight. But yeah, so we're going to get the Golden Halberd, and what the Golden Halberd has as its Ash of War is Golden Vow, which is a 20% uh, damage buff for 45 seconds, I believe. And we can just cast that and then switch right back to our Bloodhound Fang and hit things with that. So, I mean, that's, you know, a huge damage buff for not a whole lot of time commitment. So, of course, we're interested in that. And here we go. This is looking much better. There it Beautiful. is. Beautiful. Nice. All right. Did a little bit of a wait before warping there because enemies in this game, uh, when they die, they don't immediately give you their stuff. Uh, you have to wait around for a bit. Uh, and if you warp away, they can actually just respawn and not give you their stuff. And it's um, a little annoying. So we make sure not to do that. Yeah. And we're going straight into Radon here. So we're doing something called a stake skip, which is definitely not a glitch, 100%. <laughs> yeah, non-glitch, for definitely. sure. Yeah. So basically, um, there's these things called stakes of America in the game, which are like checkpoints, but you don't need to grab them like bonfires. And if you die by them, then you spawn by them. So we jump into the Radon arena. There's a stakes of America for Radon. So we trigger that. And now we're at the Radon fight and we can enter it normally. So what you will see as soon as Mitch goes into this fight is Radon opens with this uh, arrow move, and it's a very long like phase that he does, and the arrows are so annoying and whatever. So you'll see Mitch turn around and walk towards the camera. It actually temporarily despawns Radon, and so once we go back to him, he comes back in, and it breaks his AI a little bit. You see he's going to shoot to the right. He doesn't know where you are. I don't know. Then you skip the whole uh, arrow phase. Yeah, so screw this. I'm charging. Yep, yep, yep. And we're summoning in all of our buddies. And we're going to look for a specific opener here. That is not the one. So we're just going to kind of ride around at a certain distance until he does it. There it is. Mitch is going to get right up next to him and just go to town. And ideally, if everything goes well here, if our AI partners uh, help out enough, we should be able to stagger him and kill him before his phase two begins. So he's doing a scripted uh, kind of gravity buff attack here. We're going to iframe through. OK, very nice. That works. And we're looking for a stagger right about now. Nice, okay. Well, let's right. go. Nice and easy, dude. Let's go. Just in time. Nice. All right, so that's one of two great runes down. He's going to pop that Remembrance immediately just for some extra cash. And uh, now we get to see everyone's favorite character. Can we get a little bit of... A Pot friend. Pot friend. Pot there friend. we go. There he is. All right, now close your eyes. So, close your eyes. Everyone close your eyes. Just a, just a few yeah, seconds. So we there. are just thanking Alexander for his efforts yeah. in that fight. Thank you for <laughs> helping us, Alexander. And yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh no, no. Uh, I found a where, talisman yeah, on the floor. He Weird. He just, he just oh. He's fine. <laughs> okay. No. Can I open my eyes yet? You know what we always say? If Alexander didn't want to be killed, he shouldn't have had such a great talisman. No. <laughs> One of the best in the game. So. No. In lieu of flowers, please just go ahead and put $5 towards A $5 that. F to pay respects, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so that talisman does give us 10% uh, extra damage on all of our weapon arts, which is the main thing that we're going to be doing throughout the run. So it's, it's basically just 10% extra damage on a talisman. Um, way too important. We, uh, we really have to get that to be able to kill bosses quickly. Speaking of, yeah, we're going to go straight into Margit here, which will be a very quick fight indeed. So we're just going to start with a charge R2 and then you know a couple L2 R2s. He'll be staggered and we'll be done. And as you guys watch this, if, if there's any casual players of Elden Ring out there, I know so, there's got to be someone out there thinking, wow, <laughs> this guy took me forever yeah. <laughs> on like just about every boss that Mitch is fighting. So 
Oh, interesting. He does not usually do that. Okay. This should still work. Oh. That's all right. All right, nice. Right, there we go. Little improv there. Heading into Stormvale Castle here. So we're going to talk to Mr. Gostock real quick so he can open the gate for us. And we'll be on our way to Godric. There is an intended path that goes all the way around the castle, but it is very slow. So we are going to go straight through the middle. Yeah. So there's going to be some ballistas shooting some, uh, some bullets here. We're just going to hug the right wall, jump and roll at the right times, and we should be able to get through without too much of a problem. Definitely a scary section for uh, casual players and speedrunners alike. Everyone just wants to see you dead here, so... <laughs> Not the friendliest of crowds. Mm -hmm. Except for that guy. He just left him alone. <laughs> that was very nice. He was on his 15. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll see more ballistas. Uh, roll. Okay. There, there they go. go. All right, should be pretty good here. So here we're just going to pick up some kukris, which are like the bleed knives, and uh, Mitch will use a couple of those on uh, a couple of bosses, Fire Giant, um, Morgoth, don't and know the other. And Gold Free. Gold yep. Free, yeah. Yep. It's just that little bit of extra damage that helps uh, secure some kills here and there. Yeah, if you guys ever had a boss uh, stuck on one HP, this will avoid that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, throwing daggers, kukris is very useful to have on there. All right, and here comes Godric. This is going to be great rune number two. So this shouldn't be too much of an issue. So Mitch is just going to enter the fight. Uh, we'll do our Golden Bow buff, of course. And then what we're looking for is for Godric to do this kind of like axe dragging attack. Oh. <laughs> OK, OK. That has never happened to me before. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. Yeah. The birds are a menace. They always are. OK, we got the slightly more annoying opener RNG, but that's fine. So yeah, we're looking for a well-timed stagger here right as he gets to about half HP. There it is. There it is. And he normally would transition to phase two at half HP, but he can't do it off for a post attack here. And then we can do a quick L2, and there's a bleed. He's going to try to transition. Yeah. Beautiful. Yes. Very nice. And Mitch is actually quitting out here because Godric does have an extremely long yeah, he likes monologue at the end. Yeah, so this will just avoid that. And we still get the credit for it. Yeah, so. you can hear the bong. Yep, yep. So that is like one of two fights in the game that immediately registers the boss kill when you actually kill the boss. Normally, if you quit out before it says enemy felled, it would not actually register. But yeah. And works. the only one that talks for long enough that it's actually worth it to quit out there. Yeah. <laughs> So we're back here. We got those two great runes, and that uh, yellow wall here is now gone. Yep, so we can enter straight into Lane Bell here. We'll be doing a couple of park parkour skips here. They're very fancy. So we got the Lane Bell skip as we scale down the wall, and then we'll have the appropriately named uh, Dist Ruined My Life skip. <laughs> oh, yes. My favorite. Yeah, you can guess who found that one. <laughs> Yeah, which is uh, so hard that we call it uh, Dist Ruined My Life because <laughs> it, uh, it ruined all of our lives when it came out, forcing us to learn it, to try to keep up with the world record, and it uh, makes you reset, eh, you know, maybe half of your runs, uh, and that is not great. Yeah, shout out to Dist. <laughs> what a legend. All right, first off, though, we got this easier lane del skip. There's a couple different ways to do this. It's been patched once or twice. But the way Mitch is going to do it, he's going to take out this bubble boy right here. Bye-bye. And now we're just going to kind of slide back and forth down the different ledges of this wall. This just skips about 30 seconds of running down the intended path. There's very precise ledges to land on here. He should be about good. Nice. That should do it. Nice. nice. All right. So that just gets us to the main street of Landell here. And I believe Mitch is going to go ahead and grab a safety grace before he does the second uh, bit of Landell skipping here. 
Yeah, since uh, DRML, Dist Ruined My Life, Ooh, Skip, yeah. is uh, so again. difficult, <laughs> I'm just going to grab this safety grace just in case. Uh, if it doesn't work on the first try, I am just going to do it the normal way. It's only about six seconds slower to do it the normal way. But I do want to show off this awesome Skip for you guys, so I'm giving it one shot, and then we're moving on. Thank you. <laughs> If anyone can do it, it's definitely Mitch. This guy is I believe insane. in you, though. Basically, the way this is going to look is there are these little pillars along a wall. And kind of like the wall we just scaled down, there's a little bit of lip that you can stand on. And you're going to have to jump across. And you want to jump out and then punch your way back to the ledge. Because you can do midair punches to kind of change your directory. And uh, you got to do that, is it four times in a row? Uh, four times. Is it sort of a total of five jumps, but the first one's pretty free, so four that are actually difficult. Yep. So let's see how it goes. If he misses any of these, it pretty much is just immediate death. Okay, there's the first one. Oh. Ah. Oh, God, again. <laughs> okay, uh, crazy oh, luck there. Okay, okay. That is actually pretty hard to do, <laughs> so like... Yeah, that is frame perfect. <laughs> yeah. So uh, very skilled, I would say. Good work. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Only you could pull that off, man. I actually closed Only this time. You. Maybe some donos while we're reopening the game? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Audience first. All righty, here's... $5,000 from Anonymous. Wow. Woo. They say, donating for the amount of deaths in my casual Elden Ring run. <laughs> yeah. Thank you to everyone who makes SGDQ happen. And we actually had a lot of people responding to your um, pat on the back of Alexander, we'll yeah. say. <laughs> yes. Yes. First one was $50 from Anonymous. Paying respects to Alexander, let's get the train going. Let's get through the incentives for Mario Maker and Breath of the Wild. Trans rights are human rights. How much time do you think I've got to keep talking about Alexander? There's a lot in here. Uh, let's do like three more. Let's three say. more. Five dollars from Maniac Mog. Mitch, how could you to poor Alexander? Here's five dollars to pay respect. <laughs> we got five dollars from Anonymous for my boy Alexander. I understand this is GDQ, but at what cost have you oh. gone quick? At what cost? <laughs> And $500 from Mike. I've bought tickets for myself, my girlfriend, my dog, and 97 of my friends on the $5 train. Go, chefs! Let's go. <laughs> All right, so here we are making our way through the intended path through Lane Dell. Um, there are some benefits to this. We get an extra rune arc. We get to grab some extra runes. Um, so it's not you know, really necessarily a bad thing. Just didn't get to show off that skip. Um, and we're coming on our way up to uh, the Golden Godfrey Spirit. Um, very tricky fight, uh, but honestly, one of my favorites. Quite a fun one, um, but uh, very easy for it to go wrong. Yeah, you can definitely be a little bit of a jerk. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so as we get there, a um, little more just running, so I'd say a couple more donations. Alrighty, let's make it work. Here's $500 from Pete and Kate that says, this donation is going to be matched by my employer. Don't forget to check if your employer will match yours. Let's see that Super Mario Maker versus Showcase, which is currently at 148,000 of 250,000 needed. We're still creeping up there. It's fantastic. Here's $25 from Nick A that says, for Alexander! <laughs> $100 from ShyGuy32. With Iron Fist Alexander's death, the thread of prophecy is severed. Restore a saved game to restore the weave of fate or persist in the doomed world you have created. <laughs> Beautifully nice. said. <laughs> yep, so here we are just coming up to the fight. Yep, so Mitch is going to open this. He's going to throw Kukri right in Goldfree's face. Uh, that's just going to do just enough damage to save ourselves an extra R1. And then uh, most likely Goldfree will go for an axe throw at the start. Sometimes he doesn't, but it's like 90%. And then pretty much for the whole fight, we're going to want to just jump over his kind of like ground stomp attacks and do an R1 midair. And then outside of that, we're going to try to strafe around him counterclockwise. That, that avoids most of his axe swings. And then we can follow up with some nice L2-R2 combos. He 
He's being a bit of a jerk. That's okay. There's the nice. stagger. Nice. Should be able to kill him here. One more hit after this. And nice. a beautiful. All right, and right after that, we're going straight into Morgat, which is one of the more difficult fights of the run. This guy loves to attack <laughs> and attack and attack. And Morgat, attack. he attacks. <laughs> if he does something, <laughs> he just goes infinite stamina. Now, yeah. before we get there, there is uh, one guarding uh, Black Knife Assassin here, and so she's keeping very good guard. She's not going to let us go by unless we just jump behind her. <laughs> and. Um, yeah, must have been the wind. Yeah. Yeah, no. Yeah, did you <laughs> say this back? I did. No, I don't know idea what happened. All right, yeah. Morgoth is uh, personally, for me, probably the hardest fight in the run. Um, there's about 10 different openers I have to be ready for, and about five more that I am not ready for. So uh, hopefully he picks one that is decent. Yeah, so we've got our Blood Grease at the ready. We're going to do our Golden Valve buff, restore the mana, and here we go. Uh, not the worst opener in the world. Yeah, it's okay. Oh, that's a little bad. So we're looking for a stagger right when he does a kind of scripted golden shower of, of swords. He so he should be here. going for it right here. Yeah, There's the nice. stagger. We're going to follow it up with a repost. And kind of similar to Godric, he will try to phase transition at half HP. So we want is for him to get a bleed proc right before that happens. And yeah. Let's go, dude. Yeah, that's a Woo. good point. Very nicely done, Mitch. You killed it. Yeah. That was a very scary one for me. Sometimes you have to improvise. Uh, there was a little bit of improv there, but it mostly went how I wanted, and I am very happy with that. <laughs> so Morga, yeah, can quickly get into, uh, if, if the script goes off a little bit, it's just know the fight, know, know Morga, and just yeah. fight it. Just play. Yeah, just play yeah. forehead. <laughs> Nice little visit with Melanie here. She's going to give us the rolled medallion, which allows us to move on to the final third of the game up in mountaintops. Thank you, Melanie. Thank you. What a nice lady. Okay. Just popping up our damage values there. And uh, yeah, then we get to do that Dell skip once again. Mm -hmm. Just a little bit faster than going from the graves we got. Yeah, I uh, actually did forget to pop a rune a little bit earlier, so I was a bit short on runes for the levels, but uh, no worries, I can uh, pick it up later. So I'm just going to not worry about that at the moment. But uh, Aggie or Parky, make sure to remind me when we get to the uh, Mountaintop's Grace to okay. get that final level. I would never forget to level it. That's, that's <laughs> oh, like, no, no. So no. I, I got this one. Yeah, surely. Yeah. <laughs> All right, nicely done once again. Woo. Thank you. All right, as we make our way into the mountaintops, uh, we're going to be grabbing uh, a somber six, which is the next upgrade material that we need. Uh, in the mountaintops, we're going to be grabbing a seven and an eight. But also along the way, there's a lot of these misbegotten that are going to try to kill me. So I am really going to concentrate on avoiding them. And you two can talk for a bit. Hi, Parky. Hi, Aggie. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> Having a great time. Yeah. So what's cool about these somber stones is that they are mostly on the way yeah. of what you're doing, which is another reason why the somber weapons are great. Um, just an easy pickup for the most part. Here's our misbegottens. Hopefully they behave. Sometimes they like to try to catch a ride on your elevator, but uh, yeah, we'll see if they're uh, feeling rude or not. <laughs> All right, I think I'm past the danger zone. I had a heart attack with the one that was lunging at me there. But, uh, <laughs> he likes to show off a little bit. <laughs> see any visitors? Oh no, not today. Oh, they are all only elevator ride. All gone. How are you liking this run, guys? All right, doing a great job, man. Thank you. 
But yeah, this is the singular longest running section in this whole run, so we could just throw out tons and tons of donations. Mm -hmm. All righty, five dollars here from Jared from Indiana to kick us off. That says we have to get the Mario Maker showcase. Everyone, please donate. Hundred dollars here from Smart Alec that says let's go, Mitch Riz, and let's reach that Super Mario Maker Two incentive. Can we get a yes, Chef? Yes, yes chef. chef. Love that. Let's go. Twenty-five dollars here from Anonymous donating for my six-year-old daughter Kenzie watching back at home. Couple more years, kiddo, and then you can join me at SGDQ. Love you. Putting this towards the Mario Maker Two versus Showcase. This is going to be a fun one. Twenty-five dollars here from Rykard, Lord of Donations. <laughs> I don't think I feel confident, but we're going to do it. Now we can devour the frames together. Yes. yes. That's good. That's good. <laughs> that was excellent. Yeah. That's a round of applause for sure. $485 donation here from a random puppy with no comment provided. Thank you so much for that. Here's $50 from Steamed Jams. <laughs> <laughs> Likely cancer defeat, but first go fast. My nine-year-old son, Miles, has stayed up late all week to soak in every minute of this. He just asked me to donate his allowance for the Aww. last next two weeks. If you say hi to him, I think it might make his whole month. Can I get a hi from the couch and the runner? Hi. Can I get a hi from the audience? Hi. Let's go. <laughs> hi, Miles. The rest of the donation goes. Thank you all for the many years of amazing runs and saving lives. Now let's get that blindfolded Breath of the Wild. We're currently at 1.566 million. We have gotten that in just over 20 minutes. I've started tracking. Y'all are doing incredible. We have made over, what is that? I'm going to do the math again here. Uh, that's about... $40,000 since I started looking at it? That's incredible! $1,500 donation to help us with that from the fifth. Matt that says, as always, gotta donate during FromSoft Games. Fantastic commentary so far, y'all, and good luck to Mitch petting the dog blindfolded. <laughs> Shout out to the fifth Matt. Uh, he is uh, one of the greatest farm soft modders of all time. He made the randomizer for this game, randomizer for Sekiro. Uh, he makes a bunch of crazy stuff. So, amazing dude. Huge part of the community. Uh, maybe it's just worth pointing out that, uh, as you guys saw just a second ago on the elevator, and men, as, as you should do on many elevators in the run, is Mitch will often use runes or do menuing or whatever when he's on the elevators because. FromSoft elevators are so long, and so <laughs> definitely a good uh, time save there. Now, going to do a little bit of parkour around the edge here, just to avoid that black blade kindred so we don't have any incidents. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Also picked up a freeze grease. That'll be helpful for certain bosses later. And just the one, just Gideon. He's. Uh, oh, it's okay. It's just the one. Yeah. He needs it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we got to tell him to chill nerds. out. Yeah, freeze is just similar to uh, bleed. It just does a percent... Uh, damage proc. Mm -hmm. All right, as we are uh, coming along here, I do want to just uh, sort of shout out the uh, the Elden Ring speedrunning community. Uh, over uh, the last couple months, uh, it was found a new route with the Bloodhound Fang is faster. Before that, we were all using the Serpent Hunter. And it has just been such an amazing rush of finding uh, new things. Uh, even brought in just new people looking for things, and we found new skips and things like that. So the Elden Ring speedrunning community has been so active recently. And you know, if you're ever looking to uh, get a speed game, the uh, Elden Ring or any of the Souls games uh, is an awesome choice, an amazing community to be in. So I just wanted to shout them out as we are running here through the mountaintop of the Giants. Yeah. I can definitely attest to that. <laughs> Us three met through the FromSoft community. I actually uh, looked up to Mitch a lot since he did his blindfolded Sekiro run on GDQ. Um, so definitely a very great way to bring people together. I'm going to have a sniper taking pot shots at us here, but he is the worst shot of all time. <laughs> Nothing to be worried about at all. Yeah, he shoots while we're just clearly behind this here. Yeah. So we did pick up the Somber 6 and the Somber 7 already. We're going to pull up on the Somber 8 here in just a second. It is in a Scarab here. So we're going to take a brief stop just to go ahead and kill that guy. Uh, you may have noticed there was also a Scarab on the bridge to the Forbidden Lands that actually contains a Somber 6, but that Scarab is like one of the few that's actually different. So normally they just die like that and you get the item right away. 
Uh, the one on the bridge that gives you the somber six, it transforms into this like giant scarab and you have to kill him twice. So <laughs> yeah. that's why we took the little detour to just get that other somber six that was with the misbegotten. Yes. And as we are getting these uh, somber stones, it may feel like we are overpowered for where we're supposed to be in the game, but no, this is this is all on the intended path. So apparently, you're supposed to be able to do all of these uh, <laughs> these quick kills and uh, staggers and everything that we are going to be doing here. <laughs> yeah, obviously. All right, I'm sure Very that's intense. how everyone's experience yeah, went when they first played. For sure. <laughs> you guys didn't do that. <laughs> wow. Well, oh. oh. Yeah, so up next is the Fire Giant. And to get to Fire Giant, we have two kind of intended paths we could go. We could go left here at this fork and go across an invisible bridge, or we could go to the right and go across the freezing lake with Borealis, who is a bit of a jerk. Uh, we're going to do neither of those. So we're going to go about halfway through the freezing lake. The fog is going to roll in for Borealis. And then Mitch is going to do some mountain goat climbing up the side of the cliff. Mm -hmm. And it saves a whopping three seconds over going the other way. <laughs> yes, very, very big. But uh, hey. Got to show it off. Uh, it is going to be a little hard to see as I do the skip because Borealis is going to make fog everywhere. Luckily, I mostly use the compass at the top, which does not get obscured. So we should be fine. So here's the fog. There's the dragon. Everyone say hi, Borealis. Hi, hi Borealis. Borealis. Oh, oh. Uh-oh. Uh, uh, He's uh -oh. saying hi back. <laughs> and everyone say bye, Borealis. Bye, Borealis. There we go. There we go. Beautiful parkour, like always. Mm -hmm. All right. Yes, that gets us what halfway to Fire Giant here. Very roughly, roughly. So we do have a bit more walking here, so we can get a few more donations in. All righty, here's ten dollars here from Twice Baked Tato. Hey, Mitch, Tato here. You know, <laughs> the guy who picked you up at the airport, simultaneously <laughs> rescuing you from a sea of paparazzi and fangirls. <laughs> Still hard to believe how many were there at 3 a.m., but <laughs> who would miss the chance to see the Rizzler in person? Oh. Real talk, it's been great to meet you, Aggie, Parky, and the rest of the Mod Squad here at GDQ in my home state of Minnesota. Hope we can do it again sometime. Best of luck with the run. My hype for the blindfolded Malaketh fight is unreal. Much love for me and everyone in the bunch. M Riz Chad, um, M Riz Blind. <laughs> <laughs> let's go. Thank you, Tato. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's talk a little bit about what we're going to see with Fire Giant. So, Fire Giant is an incredibly annoying boss. Um, he has a huge HP pool, it's like 30,000 or something like that. So, um, to get through that quickly, again, we're going to rely a lot on bleed procs. We're going to rely a lot on um, critical hits. So, the Fire Giant has two phases. His first phase, you break his ankle, and if you hit his ankle hitbox, then it does a lot more damage than if you hit him anywhere else. So Mitch is basically going to just be hard focusing that. And mm -hmm. it should ideally be pretty scripted, where we'll get a stagger, and that stagger will chain right into phase two, where he always opens with the same attack. Hello, hand. Okay. <laughs> and uh, from there, yeah, we're going to try to get another charge attack into an L2-R2 combo right into his face, which ideally staggers again. And then from there, we can just go for the eyeball criticals, and that should kill him and proc the bleed just in time. Right, so basically, you want to uh, keep him from doing anything. Yeah, you don't want this guy to have uh, any turns whatsoever. Yeah. Of course, first, we're going to make one quick pit stop to get that plus eight so that we have the damage we need for this. Thank you, EG. And we're going back. All right. So yeah, Fire Giant starts doing Fire Giant things. It gets a little out of control, yeah, so... You do not want him to do Fire Giant. Yeah, no. Yes. Uh, and the good thing about Bleed, the thing that makes it so powerful, especially for Fire Giant, but pretty much for any boss, is that it does percentage of max health. So uh, him having, you know, 30,000 health means that our Bleed Grease will do, like, 10,000 damage or something. Yep, there he is. Just waiting good. for us. All right, we've got his attention. We've applied our bleed grease. We're going to hop off and do a golden bow. Fire Giant should go for a kind of like scoop attack. There it is. We're going to mount our horse, and it'll just let us hyper armor through it so we don't get slowed down. There's the jump. And we're looking for an ankle break into a stagger. Okay, charge R2 right as he rolls away. Beautiful. And there's the stagger. Wait for some stamina regen there. And once again, charge nice. two, good. There's phase one. So far, so good. Two creatures just for a little bit of extra damage. Charge R2 to hand, L2 to hand, and then R2 into the phase four, a stagger. 
There it is. Okay. Nice. Beautiful. Let's go. Nice. Perfect. Perfectly scripted fight. Beautifully done. And I think it is worth mentioning, as you guys saw here, Torrent has this crazy huge amount of iframes. While you're getting on and off of him, you can just dodge like anything. Very so. effective for getting through those initial attacks. Yeah, very, very cool. Yeah, and I'm very happy that that went well, because Fire Giant, definitely one of those where if it, if it gets off at all, uh, it's going to be like a minute longer and very likely that I die. So very happy that that went well. All right, and now we're about to head into Farah Missoula. Mm -hmm. Getting into the end game. So from here, it's pretty much a straight shot to the end. Uh, bosses almost back to back, and then by the end, they will actually be back to back. Um, so time for just maybe our last donations of the run. Oh, how can I pick just one, making it difficult mm -hmm. there? Well, here's $5,000 from Vanilla Thunder. Wow. They say, love watching all these formidable bosses on the receiving end of the pain train. <laughs> Here to do my part, pushing for that Mario versus Showcase. With the help of Vanilla Thunder there and everybody who's been donating, we did crest over 1,580,000 and continuing. And that Super Mario Maker 2 versus Showcase is now above 171,000 of the 250,000 needed. We are under 80,000 left to get that. We can absolutely do it, chefs. Can I get a yes, chef? Yes, chef. Yes, chef. Yeah. All right, we are in Farah Missoula, and we've got a Godskin duo, and then the blindfolded Malekith. Very, very exciting. Yeah. Nice oh, bow cancel. Beautiful. Yes. A lot of bow cancels here in Farum because we can't use Torrent, so it's going to be sort of our main speed tech as we get through here. Uh, there's a few enemies that are going to try to kill us, and I am really going to try not to get hit by them. Let's squeeze through the bow here. Yeah. Beastmen of Farah Missoula, of course. Yes, nothing else. No. <laughs> We're going to get a visit from our favorite dragon, Frank. Everyone say hi, Frank, when he comes flying in. And Frank. Here he comes, here he comes. Shirley. <laughs> hi, Frank. Hi, Frank. Hi, Frank. <laughs> <laughs> OK, bye, Frank. Bye, Frank. Bye, Frank. <laughs> what a nice guy. <laughs> he just talks to him more, you know? Don't visit him. All right, I am going to grab one safety grace here as we get through, uh, just because it's very possible to die here at the end. There's a lot of the beastmen that are going to want to kill me, so I will take that just in case. <laughs> <laughs> he loves you, man. <laughs> yeah. How can you not, really? I mean. No, you're breathtaking. <laughs> <laughs> All right, do a bow cancel here. Nice. OK, if you don't hit that one, you might get zapped by lightning. So very good. Nice. He's on fire. One. Three very good. All right, and we're coming up. Godskin Duo is here. First, we're going to go ahead and grab a somber nine and get a final upgrade for our weapon. And then we're also going to sit at the grace. Um, when you first get to Farah Missoula, you're actually trapped here. So you do need to sit before you can fast travel. So there's a conveniently placed upgrade material. Mm -hmm. We're warping out of here. Is this our last visit to EG then? Last visit it to EG. Is, so. Now, there is a somber 10 that we could potentially grab in Farah Missoula, but um, it doesn't really end up being necessary. It would save like maybe one hit on some bosses. Bye, Bye, Bye EG. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, it's just too far out of the way. We have a little skip for uh, for when you would normally pass it. So it is not in our path. So here, extremely compelling fight. It will just be absolutely riveting. Yeah, so Mitch has those sleep arrows ready to go. He's going to need to land three arrows on each of them to put him to sleep. There's one, there's two, and... Oh, oh no! no. That one did not hit. That's OK. OK, there's one. Now, this guy tries to dodge a little bit, so he could be a bit of a jerk. There okay, it is. Okay. There it is. Hey. And now we got all the time in the world to just bump yep. up. They are just so tired. Yep. It's been a long week. Okay? Yeah. 
So the goal here is we're, we're going to try to stagger them when they have like a pixel of HP left. And that's going to allow us to do some overkill damage. So he's going to... Oh, oh did not both. work. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. Just a little improv. Yeah. So yeah, basically, so this fight is kind of similar to the Four Kings where they have a shared uh, health pool. So even though the enemy is dead, you can still attack the main health bar as long as the enemy isn't fully despawned yet. So yeah, we're going to hit and then Mitch is going to do some extra hits as they just lay there. And normally, if he got the repost on the Noble, he would be dead right now. But we're going to have to wait for one extra to spawn here. But it shouldn't be too much of an issue. It could be, but hopefully okay. it won't. It's not going to be an issue. <laughs> okay. Not the greatest attack. No. Okay, he's summoning everyone's perfect opportunity to finish him off. There we nice go. So that was definitely one of those times where uh, you need to know the fight because the backup is kind of right. just play the fight out. Yeah. Easy for a guy like Mitch, for sure. <laughs> the Rizzler. <laughs> 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 All right, he smacked a pillar there to distract the boomerang boy so we can just hop across this path in peace. And then we're going to do a little bit of parkouring, the last of the run. It's uh, the Ferrum bird skip. So anyone that's played this game knows there's this like a really long alleyway where there's a ton of birds, which are horrible. And then Frank reappears and, and shoots some lightning at us, which is just no fun <laughs> at all. So we're going to uh, jump across and get to an elevator that we shouldn't be able to access yet. But I mean, just, you know, with some clever platforming we can. And then we're just going to slide across the top of a building to uh, get up to Malekith. All right, I am going to grab this uh, Grace here, both for safety and I actually want to refill my health here. We're going to need it for Malekith. So, hope you guys are excited for that. Can you get that I blindfold ready, bud? Yep. Yeah, the blindfold of Malekith is very cool. It's I know Malekith is someone who uh, everyone struggles on on their first playthrough. One of the hardest, for sure. And so... You know, Mitch can do it without looking, <laughs> so it's very, very impressive. All right, yeah, so we're just going to hop over this little balcony in your ledge here. And then once again, yeah, just jump across some pillars. <laughs> Nicely done. There we nice. go. All right, real quick before we get to Malika, do you want to kind of explain the general process of what you're shooting for, Mitch? Yeah, so basically uh, the first attack that Malekith does is not exactly guaranteed, but it's very likely to happen, and I'm just going to be resetting till I get that particular attack. Uh, once he does that attack, uh, I know what he's going to follow up with, so I know how to uh, dodge it and get around it and get a stagger on him. That should finish the first phase. Second phase, he always starts with the exact same attack. So if I position correctly, it's very, very precise. I'm going to need a lot of quiet to be able to hear the audio cues. Uh, but if I position correctly, I should be able to know exactly what attacks he's going to do to stagger him and finish him off. But uh, we'll see We'll see how it goes. So I'm going to do a little quick quit out here just so that I can get the blindfold on and get ready. Good luck, buddy. Thank you. Good luck, Mitch. Okay, so as I mentioned, I will need quiet through this fight. So there is a cutscene in the middle, but I will still need to hear, especially during the second phase. So please hold the applause or the aw, oh, you died until <laughs> after. No, no, All you right. won't die. Hold on, let me find the spot on the keyboard, mouse. Okay, should be good. Ah, not the right attack. Unforge. Unfortunate. Way to notice, though. Let's go. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, can, I can hear what attack he's doing there. I am going to need to load a uh, backup save here um, just because uh, the fight gets a little bit different after the first try. Oops, that's the wrong one. Uh, hard to see without my glasses on. Uh, <laughs> there we go. There we go. <laughs> Blindfolded and uh, save loading. Very nice. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, yeah. that's the hard part. I can't do that. <laughs> All right. One more try.
Let's Let go. Go. Yes. Atta boy, man. Let's go. Dude. Woo. First try, easy for Mitch. Oh my gosh, I am. Beautifully Ooh. done. <laughs> what a guy. <laughs> Loving the hype from the crowd yeah. on that one. Typical Mitch awesome. wears blindfold, <laughs> kills Malakith, <laughs> leaves, doesn't elaborate. <laughs> Oh, that does not normally go quite that well. So I am, I'm super happy with, uh, with how that went. And thank you all for all the donations to make that happen, uh, raising so much money for a great cause and uh, forcing me to have to do that. <laughs> <laughs> well worth it. It was super awesome. Mm -hmm. All right, and now we're in the final boss rush. So we've got Gideon, Godfrey, and then Radagon Eldenbees. Mm-hmm. Now, Gideon is one of those that uh, if you die to him or lose to him, people will laugh at you, but he is so hard. <laughs> he, he actually does this thing where whatever bosses that you fought, he does their moves. Um, so definitely a jerk. Yeah, so luckily he's completely full of himself too. So he's just <laughs> going to talk while we set up for you know a one-shot kill on him. So uh, hopefully that doesn't go wrong, because otherwise he will attack immediately. Mm -hmm. But... So this guy is just going to stand there. We're going to do our buffs. We got our freeze grease on. We got our golden valve. Oh, Gideon, you're just going to so walk behind them. OK, set up the R2 into it. Do a back step. And then we're going to do another follow up. And we're going to prop bleed and frost at the same time here. Beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> Very well done. That fight, if it goes off track, it is a hard fight. So that is very clean. And now he talks longer than the fight's over. <laughs> yep. So, yep. Typical Gideon. Cannot kill a god. Oh, Gideon. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we did get his drip, which is uh, some of the nicest in the game, I got to say. But uh, we don't quite have the endurance to wear it, so we're keeping our, our samurai garb here. Do you ever notice that his beard is made of ears? on his helmet. It is? Yeah. It's, well. it's a, the ear. Are you sure about that? Yes. No, but you, I mean, if you could take a look if you want. You made that up for the pun, but I appreciate no, it. No, You it's absolutely real. made it's real. <laughs> Take Any a look. fact checkers? <laughs> he Any is correct. Googlers? He's correct. See? Yeah. Mm. Oh, wow. <laughs> He's a strange guy like Gideon. All right. For the first time in the run, we are actually leveling up a little bit of vigor just to make sure that we can survive through Radagon. Um, but here we're coming up to Horalu, my personal favorite fight in Same. Elden Ring. Very, yeah. very cool fight. Great taste, Mitch. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the deal with Godfrey slash Horalu is that he has a phase one, and then he does a transition attack to like a phase one and a half, and then it's phase two, and then a transition attack to phase two and a half. So basically, we're going to go for a stagger. We're going to repose. He'll immediately go for phase one and a half, and while he does that, we have plenty of time to get some more attacks in which will set up right for a stagger at the start of phase two, and then that'll chain into his phase two and a half, and he'll do pretty much nothing after these opening attacks. Beautiful. There's the stagger. There's the phase one and a half transition. Nice roll. Nice. Okay, phase two. We're going to do an L2, R2, and that should stagger. Beautiful. And there it is. So clean. So clean. All right, final level up of the run before we head into the final boss. Gonna get a little bit more endurance. Uh, didn't have quite as much as I was expecting. Hold on one second while I pop a room. Better safe than sorry. And this will allow us to uh, perform our nice cosplay as Gideon. 
Let's see what that the, be- the beard. The beard. <laughs> uh, as well as give us a little bit of safety on the stamina for Elden Beast, because uh, he takes pretty much precise stamina if you don't do that level up there. So we are, this is the last boss. Yeah, um, final can boss. Can we get some hype for the last Let's boss? Go. Let's go, Mitch. Radagon gonna look a little similar to Godfrey where he has some scripted attacks when he gets to certain HP thresholds. So we're going to try and rush down a stagger and then Radagon will go for this big jump attack and then we'll get plenty of damage in there. And then he will go for his triple slam attack where we will get another stagger and then finish him off and go straight into Elden Beast. So here it is. And then he should just immediately get up and try to stomp and jump where Mitch will get even more damage. Nice use of the iframes there. All right, and the slam, which we're just going to jump over. And denied. Nice. Very nice. Such okay. a cool boss. Radagon is great. Good work, Mitch. Going to quickly buff up for Elden Beast here. Got to have all the resources ready to go. Max stamina and everything. So Elden Beast always starts with this fire attack, which gives us plenty of time to get a quick stagger in. And then from there, it's kind of up to Elden Beast what he wants to do. He'll have a ring attack that he typically goes for. Sometimes he trolls around and does some more melee attacks, but we'll see what happens. Barely catching that, very nice. Okay, good repose. He did swim away. That is pretty standard and what we expect. All right, yep. So he's going to do this ring attack. Mitch is going to position himself to be right where Elden Beast spawns in. And then we're going to finish him off as he tries to spawn in Elden Stars. Oh, no. Nope. Okay, he's, he's going doing a little bit of trips. trolling. That's fine. <laughs> nice dodge. And got it! There him. it is! Let's go! Let's go! All right. Beautiful. God slain. God slain. Excellent run, Mitch. Uh, time will come up on the credits. So just a little bit more. Got to touch the statue. Skip some cutscenes. And... Time! Woo! Very beautifully done, Mitch. Let's give some hype for Mitch, guys. Yeah. Let's go. Standing oh ovation. Yeah. Well deserved, Mitch. <laughs> Mitch is an absolute legend, everyone. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Great work, man. Oh, thank you all. Thank you all so much. Thank you so, so, so much. Means a lot. So... I have been Mitriz. This has been uh, Elden Ring, any percent glitchless. Uh, I am so glad you all enjoyed it. I want to give uh, one quick shout out. I want to give a shout out to my backup runner, Catalyst, who is also an amazing runner. And I want to give a shout out to all of the backup runners that put in all the dedication, all the hard work to be just as ready as I was to do this run. But don't always get the glory. Don't get to come up here on stage. Don't get all the fun of showing it off. So I just want to give a big shout out to all the backup runners all throughout the marathon, whether they actually did their run or didn't. All right, any shout outs from you two? Uh, yeah, I just want to give it up for our boy Mitch here. I mean, he killed it, great work. You know, we've been buddies for years, so it's so awesome to see you up on the stage just doing your thing. And if you guys want to see more Mitch, uh, check him out on Twitch, mm -hmm. Mitch You know, it's a great time. Yeah, yeah, as I said before, uh, I have been a fan of Mitch since forever, <laughs> and so it is a huge honor to now call him my friend and also be commentating here for his speed run. I am so flattered. <laughs> um, and so huge shout out to Mitch, legend, crazy gamer. Absolutely deserved everything that he's getting here. Yeah, and one last shout out to uh, Lil Aggie and Park and Harbor, both on Twitch and on YouTube. Uh, and with that, that'll do it for us. Let's please hit that $2 million for the Breath yeah. of the Wild blindfolded. I want to commentate that uh, <laughs> with yeah. my, you know, blindfolded skills. So I would love to see that hit, but thank you all so much for having me. It was so much fun. And uh, yeah, I will see you all later.
Bye bye. Bye. Alrighty, y'all. Once again, that was Elden Rings. Uh, excuse me, that was the Elden Lord Mitras themselves crushing the Elden Ring. Elden Ring, any percent glitchless category, and that blindfolded Malakath, absolutely incredible. Practice makes perfect, and I love to see what came out of that practice room to what came onto stage. Fantastic job. I have a fifty-dollar donation here from Corsair. Make me do it again. <clears throat> Arise now, ye tarnished, ye dead who yet cook. The call of long-lost recipe speaks to us all. Cross the fog to the kitchen between to stand before the Elden Cake and become the Elden Chef. All righty, thank you so much for that. Y'all, we're going to take a quick break here. We will be back in a few minutes after we can rest our voices.
All righty, here's a $50 donation from Adamy that says, last donation of the marathon, let's get that Breath of the Wild run and that Mario Maker versus Showcase. I love the energy from you all. You have raised so much money during Elden Ring. It's absolutely spectacular. Thank you so much for that, and let's keep it going the rest of the night because we have already passed $1.6 million. And you know, part of what makes these events happen, besides all of you wonderful people, are some of our sponsors, like ASUS. ASUS gaming monitors and peripherals give you the perfect blend of features and performance for the games that you love to play. You can go to us.asus, that's A-S-U-S, dot click slash SGDQ to start assembling your ultimate gaming setup. ASUS is the industry leader in gaming. They've got tough gaming and ROG monitors and peripherals, keyboards, mice, controllers, and chairs. There's seriously so much ASUS hardware that goes into the production of GDQ. It's amazing. Thank you so much for that. And as well, we also have Fan Gamer. Fangamer is a video game merchandise company based in Tucson, Arizona, and they ship worldwide. 100% of the profit sales from GDQ merch go through, excuse me, 100% of the profit from sales of GDQ merch through SGDQ 2023 benefits MSF. You can visit fangamer.com slash GDQ to see the full lineup. You could be like me. Every single year, I buy the end, the finale pin, and I'm collecting them now every time I've been a part of GDQ. So shout out to Fangamer. Thank them so much. You're fantastic. And with that, that was my time on the mic and overall being part of this SGDQ. So I want to thank you all, from viewers to attendees to volunteers, runners, and staff. The community is what makes these events so memorable and continues to change countless lives. I leave you all in the endlessly talented hands of the Thempress themselves, Ruby Hart. Be sure to keep crushing those incentive goals, and I'll see you all later. But first, it looks like we have an interview. Can you take it away?